What accounts for the precise and improbable arrangement of all the amino acids and proteins? Which improbable arrangement is necessary in each case for life to function? The answer is DNA. DNA contains the instructions for life. DNA actually contains information and a code. As the founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates, remarked, human DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. Perhaps you've heard something like that before. But what does it mean? DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, contains the genetic instructions for the development and function of all known living organisms. It contains the information the cell uses to build all the proteins in the body. And, as it was covered earlier, proteins are necessary for life to function. DNA is a molecule that's found within the cell. It has a captivating double helix structure. It looks like a twisted ladder. DNA is packed and stacked on an amazingly small scale within chromosomes in the cell. A human being has 23 pairs of chromosomes, which contain DNA, for a total of 46. DNA is so small that 6 feet of DNA can fit into the nucleus of each cell in our body. To get an idea of how small one nucleus is, 10,000 nuclei could fit on the tip of a needle. That means that when we're talking about DNA and the information it contains, we're talking about an intricacy of function and sophistication on a breathtakingly minute scale. So exactly how does DNA contain and express information? How does it transmit the information necessary to build proteins? What does all of that mean? That's what we need to discuss. In this picture, you can see that the double helix structure of the DNA molecule looks like a ladder that has been twisted. The genetic key to DNA is found in the steps of the staircase, if you will, the nitrogen-containing bases. Each segment of DNA contains a sugar, a phosphate group, and a base. Together they form what's called a nucleotide. It's the DNA bases, the steps of the ladder, if you will, on which we must focus. There are four types of chemicals that make up the four different bases in DNA. They are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. They are represented by the letters A, T, C, G. The precise arrangement of these chemicals allows all life to function. If these chemicals are not arranged in the correct order, there will be no life. Here's why. Proteins are made up of chains of amino acids, as we discussed, and the amino acids which form proteins must be in the proper order or sequential arrangement for the protein to form. If the amino acids are not in the correct order, a protein will not fold into the proper three-dimensional shape that is necessary for it to function. The protein will not be built. So the amino acids must be in the proper order or sequence for a protein to be built and for life to exist. It has also been discovered that the highly improbable order of amino acids in chains, which is necessary for life to function, comes from a prior specific order or sequential arrangement of the bases in DNA, the chemicals on the steps of the DNA ladder. In other words, if the chemical bases in DNA, A, T, C, and G, which run up and down the DNA molecule, are not in the proper order, then amino acids will not link up in the proper sequence and proteins will not be built. By the early 1960s, scientists had developed many techniques for studying the effects of changes in DNA sequences on proteins. These techniques enabled scientists to establish a definitive link between base sequences in DNA and the sequences of amino acids. Experiments using such techniques eventually revealed a set of correspondences between specific groups of bases and individual amino acids. These correspondences came to be called the genetic code. Here's how it works. Please bear with me as I very quickly attempt to explain this, for possessing a basic understanding of this matter is necessary to recognize how DNA contains information and constitutes a code. In DNA, you have the double-stranded structure of the molecule, as we saw. Now suppose that running up one strand, you have the bases A, C, T, G. 
in other words, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and then guanine. Well, in DNA, the chemical A, or adenine, always pairs with T, thymine, and C, cytosine, always pairs with G, guanine. That means that when you have the order or arrangement of ACTG, for example, on one strand, right across from it on the other strand of the double helix, running in the other direction, you will have TGAC, because adenine is always across from thymine, and guanine is always across from cytosine. The chemical bases in DNA come in many different orders, but in whatever order you have, adenine is always paired with thymine, and guanine with cytosine. Now, the formation of a protein involves a process called transcription. During this process, the DNA molecule, which has a double-stranded structure, is unzipped. The two strands are separated. In this image, you can see the dotted lines, which show the hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine. In DNA transcription, the hydrogen bonds are broken, allowing the double helix to unzip. By the way, when DNA is unzipped and the two strands are separated, a protein is necessary to unzip it. But proteins are only formed from DNA. This demonstrates that both proteins and DNA must have existed simultaneously from the beginning. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Run on for a long time Sooner or later gotta cut you down Sooner or later gotta cut you down